Hi and welcome to this week's Wu Wei Wisdom Life Lessons Teaching. It's great to be back with you all. This week we are talking all about your inner child goals for the new year, for 2024. And we're going to be sharing what we believe are the four most important things that you can do in the new year to enhance your inner child relationship inner child reparenting work, and inner child healing. Okay, David, so before we dive into our top tips for the inner child work in 2024, for our new listeners, explain what we mean by the inner child. Thank you, Alex. Well, in our model, we mean a part of your mind. You may already be able to identify it. You may call it your ego or your subconscious mind. I want you to think about calling it and thinking about it as your inner child. And it's a part of your mind that's kind of frozen with childhood experiences. For me, working with clients, the age of between six years old and nine years old seems very important. I think it's important because at that age, Your emotions have fully developed, but your cognitive reasoning hasn't reached that level. And so therefore, something may be happening in your life, in your family. It may be a dysfunctional family issue. It may be a lack of love from your parents or your siblings. Maybe problems at school, being bullied. Maybe a whole heap of problems that we talk about in our videos. But what happens is our mind kind of gets frozen, Mm -hmm. gets locked. I like what the Chinese say, it's like a kernel in the middle of the nut. And so we can continue to develop quite naturally, but that way of thinking is still looking at it in a very childlike way of right and wrong, good and bad. And what it normally does, it becomes very, what we call CCJ, very critical, very comparing, and very judgmental about yourself and about other people. And so although in every other part of your life you're a loving, caring, compassionate person, that this part of your life kind of sees things in a different way. And that's what we mean by the inner child. One last thing is very important. We're not talking about something external to you. We're talking about your mind and how you control your mind and how you don't allow that part of your mind to take over. And I think, David, for me, the point here is that, yes, it's part of us, it's part of our mind, but it's just, I guess, one element of our psyche, but it's a very important part of our psyche, our inner child. And for a lot of people who are not, kind of compassionately managing their inner child through inner child work and inner child reparenting, that part of their mind becomes so domineering, so dominant, and it runs their life when the out of balance inner child is in control of your life. You people really, really struggle. And that's a kind of what we do all these inner child teachings for is to help people reparenting and bring their child back into a harmonious balance with the rest of who they are. That's right, Alex, because what happens is, as I say, you get a wonderfully intelligent, mature, loving person. But actually at the steering wheel is this six, seven, eight-year-old child running the show and the, the adult parent, although functioning in all the areas of their lives, is not functioning in this area because they've kind of surrendered Mm -hmm. and put the child at the steering wheel of the car so they're not in control that part of the mind that we're labeling the inner child is actually in control Mm -hmm. and that child as we say on a lot of our teachings their playbook their operating system is based on childhood misunderstandings of things they just didn't understand that were happening to them when they were young because Although they felt the emotions very strongly, so whether that's fear, uncertainty, anger, frustration, sadness, they didn't have the cognitive reasoning, they didn't have the life experience. None of us do when we're young. 
And so if we allow that part of our mind to be in control of us as an adult, it's like having a six, seven, eight, nine year old running the show on based on childhood understandings of how the world is and who they are. And that's a good insight, Alex, because a lot of people, rather than reparenting the child and maturely giving the child emotional intelligence, they set up a kind of a war. It's an internal battle or internal tug of war. So they're fighting each other. They're fighting themselves. And they say some really terrible things to themselves that we call the three lies. I'm not good enough. So if you've ever said this to yourself, remember that you're listening to your inner child. I'm not good enough. I can't cope. I'm unlovable. I'm unworthy. And so if you're living your life looking through the lens, the filter of those three lies, this is what brings you emotional problems in your career, in your relationships, but really in your self-care, in how you look after yourself, because you're denying an even bigger part of you that I want to explore is what I call your Shen, your spirituality. And when I say spirituality, again, I'm not talking about something outside of you. I'm not talking about religion or something external. I'm talking about there's a part of you that is divine, that is awesome. And connecting to that part of you is very important. Okay, David. So let's dive into these top tips. Now we've given the foundational understanding of what the inner child is and why it causes problems for us. So the first thing that we really, really encourage you all to be doing uh, with your inner child work is just a simple understanding that our inner child communicates with us through emotions. So when people say, oh, I don't know when my inner child is talking to me, I don't know what my inner child is, how do I recognize it? The emotions. Yes, so that goes back down to basic teaching, Alex, is you are the creator of your emotions. You are not the victim. Now, this is very important because many of my clients who listen to these videos and come on for a personal one-to-one, -one, they'll say something like, as when I say to them, do you accept that you create your emotions? And they'll normally say something like, yes, but. And that but is very important because intellectually, they understand and they acknowledge that emotions don't float around the room or attack them. They create the emotion. But there's a part of the mind that we're calling the inner child cannot accept that. And exactly how Alex says, it cannot accept that because it uses that to control you. So it uses fear, anxiety. It uses being scared. It wants to be future-proofed. And so how it controls you and how it gets you to surrender, as I said in the opening, is by the, by the emotions, you stop doing things that are authentically correct for the mature mind of you because of fear, because of anxiety, because of being scared. And this is how it takes control and tries to get, and it's the inner child so funny because it wants what it wants when it wants it, yeah. like a child. And that's why I like the analogy of the inner child. It's just like a child. And if you've got your own physical children, you know how children act. They're not evil. They're not bad. They just see life through their lens. And they want what they want when they want it. And your inner child is exactly the same. So, David, when we experience red light emotional feelings so uncomfortable or painful emotional feelings and we notice those within ourselves so it could be sadness anger depression fear anxiety hopelessness the whole spectrum of emotions in a way it kind of doesn't matter what we label those emotions we just need to recognize that they are there they are present within us I think what we're saying is most of the time those emotions are an indicator that your inner child 
is at work. Your inner child is rattled by something. Your inner child is being triggered, if you like, based on a belief that it has. Sometimes when we experience those uncomfortable or painful emotions, they could be for an authentic reason. So not necessarily to do with the inner child. So one example of that would be experiencing sadness because of the death of a loved one or uh, a, a sense of, I guess, anxiety, if we're going to use the labels, when we've just found out some very bad health news. But if it's a kind of a constant stream of red light emotions or ongoing or low level all the time, or it doesn't diminish then that is an indicator that it's the inner child trying to tell us something. There is something unresolved. The inner child is unhappy. And that's when we need to start to do the inner child work. Well, that's well explained. And when you were explaining, this is why I prefer to call emotions red light feelings rather than giving them names like you were trying to do, like anxiety, grief, fear. Because sometimes, as you say, if you love, if you lost a loved one, it is totally normal and totally appropriate to create a red light emotion that you would perhaps call grief. I would prefer to call it a red light emotion because that red light emotion should be appropriate for the situation. Now, if that red light emotion, whether it's grief, whether it's anger, whether it's frustration, whether it's anxiety, continues and takes over your life, and as you said, the inner child part of your mind is now in control and guiding you. And that's why if you start calling it the red light emotion, you can ask yourself the golden thread question, why am I creating mm. this red light emotion? Is it appropriate? Is it appropriate in this situation? And if the answer is yes, then everything's fine. But if the answer is no, if you're consumed with grief and grief takes over your life and you can't live your life because of grief, then it's not appropriate. Mm, because there is something within the inner child part of your psyche that is unresolved that the inner child won't let go of. And that's when we come on to our second point now is we can recognize and of course we feel these red light emotions within us but we can't we shouldn't just stamp them out we shouldn't just ignore them or we shouldn't just let become all consumed by the red light emotions the second step really is we must 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 listen to the inner child take time to have that inner conversation to us with ourselves and start to do the golden thread process work that you do with all your clients, David, which is ask that simple question, you know, what am I thinking here? What is behind the emotion? So don't just become overwhelmed by the emotion and do everything to avoid the emotion, whether it's kind of masking it off by watching too much TV, spending too much, drinking too much, eating too much. It's really to address head on this inner child, these inner child issues as they bubble up in the form of our red light emotions? Well, you use a very important word there, unresolved. And this is what really the golden thread is. And for those of you new, the golden thread is self-inquiry, starting at the red light feeling and asking yourself, why am I creating this red light feeling? And as you fold in the gold, follow the golden thread, like following a thread down through all of the thoughts, you come to the unresolved issue that the child has. So the child may think, the child part of your mind may think that things should be the, the way that they want them. Normally the inner child will think things like unfairness, injustice. It's not fair. It shouldn't happen to me. It's not the way I want it. This isn't the way that life should be. And so those are the unresolved issues that, as Alex has just explained, is vital for you as a spiritual being to live your life authentically and to follow your path. You have to resolve those issues because if you don't, the inner child through emotions 
will always create this inner turmoil, this inner fight within you, trying to gain control, trying to be one-upmanship. And there's where the problem lies. And so, David, in a practical sense, when we we recognize we have the red light emotional feelings, we do the little stress test, as you suggested, you know, is it appropriate for me to be experiencing the depth and the breadth of this red light emotion or is there something else going on here and then we need to sit down and start doing the self-inquiry now sometimes it's not appropriate to do that process there and then because we're at work we're busy with family but that we should every day we should make time whether it's in the evening or first thing in the morning just 10 minutes a day to have open up that conversation with ourselves with that inner child part of our mind and that's what I would call a meditation. And I would definitely encourage you, and on our site, we've got several little meditations, 10-minute meditations, longer meditations, inner child meditations. For me, meditation is the process of focusing your mind in doing the golden thread, in finding those unresolved issues from your childhood, from situations that you couldn't deal with or you put to one side, Or you blamed yourself, saying there's something wrong with me. There's something missing in me. There's nothing missing in you. There's nothing wrong with you. You are awesome. But you have to resolve those issues because if you don't, they play a part all the time during your mature adult life. They're always there playing their role. Okay, David. And so if we you know, whether we sit in a quiet meditation and just allow the inner child's narrative to bubble up, you know, to encourage them to open up. So not just outpour of red light emotions, but what what is it that is troubling them? What is it that is creating anxiety, fear, anger, frustration, hopelessness, whatever, whatever label we want to give it? When we do that, I mean, that's an amazing first step, which, frankly, most people don't do because Mm. most people avoid. They don't Mm. take the time to have this conversation. But when we do that, the third thing, the third most valuable thing we must do to encourage like an open, loving dialogue with the inner child is that we need to speak to them compassionately. We shouldn't be critical or harsh on them. That's so important, Alex, is what you just said, because what the inner child will do is to put up this great big tsunami wave of emotions. And as you quite rightly said, many clients then won't go through that wave. They'll become the victim of the wave. That's why that teaching is so important. You are the creator of your emotions. You're not the victim because you have to go through that wave, as Alex has just explained, to be able to communicate with compassion, with love, with understanding. And this is why I love the idea of the inner child. I want you to think about you as the spiritual parent and that part of your mind as your spiritual child. And it's your responsibility. I'm going to repeat that. You are responsible for educating that child with love, with kindness, with compassion, with truth, with honesty, with integrity. You have to find those unresolved issues and resolve them. That's your role. That's your job in the inner child reparenting. Think about the word. You are reparenting. You are stepping into the role of a parent and doing perhaps what your parents couldn't do. This is where you have to come to the crease. This is where you have to come to the center. And this is where you have to blossom into your full spirituality and take on that role. Because if you don't take on that role, it will never be done. And you'll have, for the rest of your life, you'll have this internal conflict and negative dialogue. These three lies will be going on in your head time and time and time again. And I think, David, before we move on to the last point, I just want to say that, you know, 
none of us want to experience red light emotions. None of us really want to have unresolved childhood issues. None of us want to have childhood traumas. None of us want to have the inner child running our life because we want to be moving on. We want to be reaching our potential. We want to be happy. We want to be living in flow. So quite naturally, when we're authentically driven for those things, it can be easy to get frustrated with our inner child, to get frustrated with ourselves. Oh, here I go again. Oh, this is always tripping me up. Oh, I thought I'd resolve this, but I haven't. Oh, this is slowing my life down. Oh, this is ruining my relationships. But those are the times when we have to be kind and gentle with ourselves and not chastise the the child because this part of our mind is just stuck. You know, we may have put the work in, but it just may need that extra 20% of uh, persistence, of compassion, of dialogue to break through an issue that the inner child is stuck on. So that compassionate, loving self-talk that we need to have with ourselves, because when we have that compassionate self-talk with ourselves, we're having it with our inner child. And this is so important, Alex, because a lot of my clients will find that so difficult to do because it's unfamiliar. They've never heard it. They haven't heard it of other people. And they'll say things like, well, my parents never did that, or my family never did that, or my partner never does that. Why should I do it? And you should do it because you value yourself. You value your worth. And that's what I said earlier. The key to this is what I call Shen, your spirituality. You do it because you believe you're worth it. Doesn't matter if somebody else doesn't believe that. The teaching is, do you believe in your inherent worth and value? Do you believe in your spirituality? Can you go that extra mile? I love what the Taoist masters say. Can you walk on fresh snow? Can you do something that's never been done for you simply because you believe in yourself and you believe in your innate divine nature as a human being and you hold, as Alex says, your potential, what your road is, reaching your intentions, what you want for your life as the most important thing. And that's why breaking through the emotions, connecting to your worth and your value, and doing this worth work because your worth is, is so important. Thank you, David. And so the final step, or the final, I guess, a gem of wisdom that we want to give you is about what you've kind of touched upon David this idea of viewing you the adult part of you the mature part of you the parent part of you the wise part of you and your inner child as one as a team as a complement the adult part of you the Shem part of you the wise spiritual part of you should be the guiding compassionate wise parents to your inner child and you should be consistent and that trust, building trust with the inner child is vital as part of this. But that also our inner child has so much positive to offer us. So it's not all the kind of the negative struggles and red light emotions. The inner child is beautiful, it's creative, it's playful. When it's in balance, it's a wonderful part of who we are in our psyche what you said there is so important, and it touches on two things. The Taoists call this yin and yang, that in any situation we have a yin and yang, and we're trying to find the balance of the yin and the yang, and that's wu wei. That means in your flow. Wu wei means living in your flow. So the inner child, as Alex has just explained, is not your enemy. It's not someone to crush. It's not someone to dominate. It's a really important part of you. And I see that in a child when I work with clients as a part of you that's kind of frozen, that's been frozen for so many years, that needs to be released. 
Alex explained it wonderful. Why would that inner child want to be locked in a dungeon, in a cellar, in a prison, when it can be out playing, flying its kite, enjoying life? And to do that, the part of you that I would call your Shen, the mother energy, the father energy, the parental energy, the spiritual energy has to go down, re-educate the inner child, release the inner child, allow the inner child to touch on what Alex has just explained, the creativity. One of the things I find most common and most important about the inner child, you know, is his determination. The inner child is very strong. Most people will see it as stubbornness. The inner child will dig in his heels. It won't want to move. But actually, it's showing you how determined you are. And once it gets that information to come out of the prison, to go out and play, then you can bring that strength and determination in balance, in Wu Wei, into your normal life. And your life begins to change because now you are attuned. It's almost like, I don't know, a guitar string that's out of tune. And what we're doing by this work is bringing it into a melody to be able to play a symphony of your life. You are an amazing person. You've got so many wonderful attributes that you're not using that's been blocked away. This is your time now to learn these lessons. We've got so much in the archives giving you insight into bringing you into the oneness. So the yin and yang are not fighting each other. The inner child and the spiritual part of you are one in a oneness. And you can live your life authentically, truthfully. I believe in you. I believe that you are awesome. There should be no doubt in your mind that you agree with that statement that I've just made and you believe in yourself without doubt. Thank you, David. And I think once once we have like a full, I guess, appreciation and and understanding and acceptance of all the things we've talked about, like the concept of viewing you in the inner child, your inner child as a team, although it uh, for some people can seem like we're talking about abstract concepts rather than practical applications. Those abstract concepts, if we can understand them, it's like it shifts our energy, it shifts our approach, it affects our thinking, it affects our daily actions, it affects how we talk to ourselves. So they're so fundamentally important that we just have this basic understanding of what the child is, how it communicates with us, how we need to listen to it, how we should be consistent, how we should talk to it compassionately and not criticize, and how we should view it as contributing positively to the wholeness of us and our responsibility to parent that inner child. You're so right, Alex. That inner dialogue that we have with ourselves is so important. And perhaps we can finish on what I call the Shen test. The Shen test for me is the way you talk to yourself, the way you deal with your issues, would you do that to your physical child? Would you ever say to your physical child, you're not good enough? Would you ever say to your physical child, you can't cope, life's too big for you, too important, you can't manage it? Would you ever say to your physical child, you are unlovable, you are not worthy of love? And of course, you wouldn't. Do you ever say that to yourself? And that, as Alex has just said, that inner talk is what you have to be very conscious and aware of. And that, to me, is like part of the meditation. Meditation is focusing your mind. Your inner talk should be pure, truthful, honest, and have integrity. And that will, simple concept, will change your life right now. And these changes you can put into action now, today, not tomorrow, not next week. You can start doing it right now. 
Thank you. And if you enjoyed this teaching and found it helpful, David is preparing a brand new guided meditation, which we're going to publish same time next week to work through these four principles, these four teaching, these four tenets of inner child work to help you with your inner child relationship in the new year. So please do tune in for that as well. We really hope you enjoyed this teaching. Please do comment and let us know and perhaps share it with someone else who you think may also benefit from it. David works every week with clients all over the world via Zoom video call on exactly these sorts of issues. If you're interested in working one-to-one with David, I will also put a link in the show notes to learn more about David's consultations. And finally, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We produce new long form teachings every Saturday, as well as two midweek short snippets of video wisdom every week. So don't forget to subscribe. We look forward to sharing with you again very soon. Bye bye.